But here's where you really need to fear this kid, and I will say he is the next Bryce Young. He escapes the pocket, gets a little bit more time, throws it downfield. Oh, yeah, 35-yard rope, hits him in stride yet again. He's the next Bryce Young. So we all thought Bryce Young was pretty good, right? Can we come to a consensus on that? Can we come to an agreement? I think we can. I understand 2020's hindsight, but you can go back and watch the videos from years ago. I've been trying to tell people that Bryce Young was going to be a legend in Alabama, and a legend he was. Dating back to high school, if you watched this kid, if you kept up with him, you knew he was a one of one. And the really interesting part about all this is Alabama got kind of lucky to even land him in the first place. See, originally, he was committed to USC and he wanted to go there, but their program, it wasn't up to his standards. And matter of fact, to give you some more information, Bryce Young's parents only lived about 25 minutes from USC and that was a big factor. Bryce Young wanted to go to a college where his parents could come and watch him play. So I know what you're sitting there wondering, well how in the crap did he end up in Alabama and it's for one reason and one reason only. Bryce Young and his family took a visit to Alabama and they came to the conclusion that day that Alabama was the best fit for him. And that just goes to show you how USC really fumbled that opportunity because he wanted to go there but their program wasn't up to the standards. And when I say standards I mean Bryce Young and his parents standards for their kid to have a great opportunity. And for me to sit up here and tell you guys that Bryce Young was fantastic at Alabama, that'd be an understatement. I mean, heck, the dude won a Heisman Trophy. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you how good he is. I've done that for the past couple of years. Bryce Young is an Alabama legend, and he gave defenses all around the SEC a lot of fits the past couple of years. And now all these other colleges and schools in the SEC, they're like, all right, finally, we're done. We don't have to worry about Bryce Young anymore. But whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Just like Lee Corso says, not so fast, my friend. What would you say if I told you that Alabama has already found their new Bryce Young? Yes, that is right, you heard me correctly. Alabama has just found their new Bryce Young. I know that's some high praise, trust me, but this kid, he could potentially be better than Bryce Young. Key word, I said potentially. I'm not saying he's going to be, but that's his potential. Remember, potential doesn't mean anything if you don't touch it. This new young kid that Alabama, Nick Saban, and their entire staff has picked up and found, let's just say he's the real deal. To give you an even better perspective, y'all know the quarterback that everybody's been hyping up, including myself, Dylan Raiola, who just committed to Georgia? Well, this kid's already better than him. And that's not my opinion, that's off of cold hard facts and evidence that we're going to go over in this video. You know your boy Matt likes his cold hard facts, so we're definitely going to look at those. We got a lot to talk about in today's video, and by the way, the highest subscribed college football channel is ESPN College Football with 499,000 subscribers. 499k? Yeah, that's a lot, but guess what? We're trying to pass them. It's simple, subscribe to the channel, help us pass ESPN College Football. We will pass them one day, guarantee it. Help us get a little bit closer to that goal. All right, Matt Bob, I should crap up. Now without further ado, let's get on to it. First thing is first, I want to address this. You're always going to have these naysayers when I say this kid's the next Bryce Young. Everybody's going to say, or not everybody, but some people, they're going to say, Matt, how are you going to say this is the next Bryce Young? Ain't no way, man. That ain't even possible. And I always find it so funny because those would be the same people who wouldn't have believed it if you would have told them that Bryce Young would win a Heisman Trophy. It's just funny how things work. And look, off the bat, I'm not telling you that you have to agree with my opinion, but hear me out before you write a comment like that. With that being said, I say we just get straight into it. The quote-unquote what I'm going to label as the next Bryce Young goes by the name of Julian Sayan. Very similar to Bryce Young, he's listed at about 6'1", 195 pounds. I would say Bryce Young's more so of about 5'11", 190, but still, similar body types. Julian Sayan's kind of on the lighter side, and it's the same thing for Bryce Young. To go along with that as well, and it just goes hand in hand, it just feels like the next Bryce Young, and I can't emphasize that enough, guess where he's from? California. You can't make this up, man. They say history tends to repeat itself. And according to how you look at it, on the 24-7 sports rankings, like they're just raw rankings, he's a four-star recruit, but on their composite rankings, he's a five-star. Most people label him as a five-star, so therefore, I'm going to do the same exact thing. He's a five-star in my books. In my books. I think it's in my book. Uh, yeah, you get what I'm trying to say. And also, last but not least, very similar to Bryce Young, he is committed to Alabama. 
I've been keeping up with this kid for about, I'd say, the last mm, eight to nine months. Watched some film on him, done some research, and I love everything I see so far. I'm going to break down some of his highlights in just a second, but here's also something that has happened in the past couple of days that justifies this video even more. The Elite 11 has been going on, and you should know what this is. For those of you that don't know what the Elite 11 is, you should, but long story short, it's where your top quarterback recruits, they go to this camp, and they battle it out. To give you some perspective, to even get to the Elite 11, you got to be a dog. And you probably know where I'm about to go with this. Guess who won the Elite 11? Julian Sayan. Yep, that's right. You heard me correctly. He is the MVP of the 2023 Elite 11. You know who finished behind him? The guy that everybody's raving about, Dylan Raiola. And trust me, I love Dylan Raiola, but kind of impressed him that Julian Sayan beat him out. But hey, that's just me, though. That's just me. You can do what you want with this information. And of course, just like with anything in life, you're going to have your haters. For example, this person said, Winners never really turn out well, so good thing Raiola got second. Obviously, that's probably a Georgia fan, and that comment is so ridiculous to me because if Dylan Raiola would have won it, you wouldn't have said the same thing. That's just hater energy to me, and it doesn't make sense because a lot of the MVPs of the Elite 11 have fared out pretty well. Tua Tungvaola, he won the Elite 11. He's doing all right. I believe Justin Fields also won it, and CJ Stroud won it, I think, and K Klubnik. My memory could be a little foggy on that, but just how the top of my head those are some of your recent winners that's besides the point the point is julian saying beat out dylan raiola in this camp and remember raiola is the kid that everybody's praising everybody's hyping up well here's my question how come nobody's talking about julian saying i mean because theoretically speaking if dylan raiola is supposed to be this next big time hot shot which i think he will be what does that say about saying what does that say about saying that's a mouthful but you get what i'm saying ah wait a while i didn't mean to do that but still you get what i'm saying let's take a look at his film though i do want to break this down and let me know in the comment section if you want to see more stuff like this there's a couple of different plays that stick out to me and i'm going to show you those but here's one that really caught my attention they're at about the i'd say 34 35 we'll just say 35 and he throws this ball from about the 25 in the air this pass goes from the 25 to the 35 and it looks like he didn't even take any effort whatsoever and what i love the most about him similar to mac jones and bryce young at alabama both great touch and if you played sports you understand this there's something about having a feel for the game and having a certain touch that you can't teach i think a great example is if you ever played baseball growing up there's always that one kid when you're 10 feet away throwing it 100 miles per hour like dude you don't need to throw it 100 miles per hour. I'm right in front of you. You got to have some touch, man. Same thing with basketball. Growing up, kids always struggle with throwing the basketball way too hard off the backboard. You got to have touch. Julian Sayan has it in his game already. Reminds me a lot of Bryce Young. Let's get to move on, though, to these next two plays in eerily similar throws, both from about the 40, 41-yard line, a streak route, and he dots them up. And the one thing I want you to notice is these receivers are catching these balls in stride. They are falling into their laps. You just simply any level of the game can't throw a ball better than this but check this one out this one really gets me excited takes a snap and where's he at about the and eh, we'll say the 30 from the 30 to the 30 in stride like i said before you can't do it much better than this he puts the ball and this reminds me of two at alabama he hits the receivers in stride that is an underrated aspect when it comes to evaluating quarterbacks. Can you hit the receiver while they're running in a certain direction? Because if you just throw it one to two yards behind them, it messes up everything. This next one goes back to me talking about the touch. He knows he needs to put a little steam on it, throw a nice little, eh, we'll call it a bullet pass, and boom, he zips it in there. Let's run that back, though, because I want you to pay attention. He gets it right over that safety's head. And he couldn't lob it in there because if he wanted to, the safety would have had time to catch up to it. But here's where you really need to fear this kid, and I will say he is the next Bryce Young. He escapes the pocket, gets a little bit more time, throws it downfield. Oh, yeah, 35-yard rope, hits him in stride yet again. He's the next Bryce Young. Everything he does, at least at the high school level, it reminds me of Bryce. And this way right here, it's so simple, but just stepping up in the pocket, moving to the side, creating a little more time to throw similar to Bryce Young and I think I'll get the point you're probably tired of me saying he's similar to Bryce Young but I just can't emphasize that enough Julian Sayan already has an unreal arm but his escapability and him just moving in the pocket and when he escapes he's looking to throw downfield it's at another level I don't want to say he's ready for the NFL but he's definitely ready for the collegiate level I'm only going to show you a couple more plays but on this one I want you to notice and just pay attention at how he directs the traffic doesn't have anything there on the first read escape and he's like all right all right point and point and boom 
hits them and you know simple 20 25 yard game it's little plays like that that stick out to me of course it's not going to be on the highlight well, it was on this highlight but nobody's really going to talk about that but those are the plays that matter the most he turned nothing into something and that's what bryce young specializes in this is the last one i'm going to show you but check this out notice how quick from the time the ball hits his hands to when he lets it go all right watch right here Hikes it about what? Two seconds, boom, it's already gone. He can play, man, he can play. And keep in mind, I just showed you a couple and a few of my favorite plays from him. There's many more. Also, similar to Young, he is sneaky athletic. Do not sleep on his feet. He doesn't look to run, but if he's got to, he will. And here's where the butterfly effect comes into effect. I don't think if Bryce Young would have left California and went to Alabama, Julian Sand would be doing the same thing. I think the reason he's doing it is because he saw how it worked out for Bryce Young and he's going to copy the same pathway. I tell you this much, if I was a quarterback, heck, why wouldn't I go to Alabama? They're a quarterback factory at this point in time. Every quarterback they've had in the past three or four years is a starter in the NFL. Jalen Hurts, Tua Tagovailoa. Bryce Young, Mac Jones, I mean, good gosh almighty. I think all of you can tell I love everything about this kid's game, and I really struggled, and I was trying to find something to knock on him, but I don't know what to hate on. It's really hard to find flaws in these kids' games, especially at the high school level. They're not playing the greatest or great competition, so they rarely ever get exposed. To the rest of the country, let this be a warning. Alabama's got a stud coming in. I have no problem saying that whatsoever. I believe in him 10,000%. He's that good, man. He's that good. Believe the hype. But I am curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But uh, Romany!